turned up to this one, Worcester Bosch 30 SI leaking everywhere. As you can see, the pressure hasn't dropped, which tells me it's probably on the domestic side. There's quite a bad leak, to be fair. Let's isolate the cold and see if it stops. You can instantly hear that go, so I'm going to say it's probably the flow manifold because it's on the left, but let's get the case off and have a look. So we're going to have to pop the water back on to see. And there we go, we've got a squirter at the back. Right, so let's turn that cold back off and open a hot tap to take the pressure off. You don't have to move the electrolytes, but I do, just to get some more space and just tuck them up there out of the way. Let's disconnect the rubber hose off the condensed trap and we'll twist that out of the way. Gonna need some grips to get that condensed nut undone. Watch you don't lose the fibre washer. And remove the trap out of the way. Now I'm gonna isolate the flow and return underneath. Then I'm gonna use my good friend Eddie to help drain down. So we're going to pop that on there. I'm going to pop the diverter valve motor out so that it drains everything out the boiler. Then open the drain off. Then open the vent at the top of the heat exchanger. Next I'm going to apply some WD-40 to every joint that we're going to disturb. Pull the securing clip out for the domestic hot water sensor, unplug it, and then just wiggle it out. Straight away you can see that's a little worse for wear, so we'll get rid of that. The part we need is the flow manifold, there's the part number, screenshot that for reference. That's it laid out, that's what comes with it, all the washers and clips you need. I prep as much of this outside of the boiler as I can, so I've popped the clips in now, that's the first thing that I do. Then I pop the rubber bung in the side. Fat edge goes at the back. Then I use plenty of lube and put the plate washers on. And then the little clip at the top. Again, plenty of lube and I lube up all of the holes. Just makes your life a bit easier when you come to pop it in. 24 mil set spanner to undo the domestic hot water. Pull the securing clip out of the way. These can get a little stuck, so I just pop a screwdriver underneath and just pop it off. Then I'm going to twist it out the way, put a smaller spanner on and just tap it down. You can use your hands and wiggle it down, but when it goes, you don't have to cut your knuckles. I did all this one-handed, so it is quite difficult to film and to do this, but I think I just about managed it. Make sure you get all of that fibre washer off, because otherwise it won't seal. Now onto the flow pipe, pull that clip out. I got a little distracted and I'm going to pull the expansion vessel hose out of the way as well. So pull the clip, get your grips on there, just wiggle it out of the way. There'll be a little bit of water again. And make sure you've got something underneath to catch it all. Pull the securing clip out for the bypass. Put that somewhere safe because you're going to need that again. Plenty of WD-40 in there because that's going to be one of the trickiest things to get off. Back to the flow nut, get that undone. It's a 30 mil set spanner if you want to know. Again, flat edge screwdriver to pop it off. Same principle again, we're going to literally twist it out of the way. This is quite difficult for me to twist with hand, so I'm going to get some grips on it and just twist it round. That'll give you enough room to literally get enough on it to wiggle it and pull it out. I've tried to make this video as realistic as I can. Obviously, none of this stuff's been out before, so you can see the struggles. Undo the plate securing screw. With this clip, you literally use your grips, clip it together, and then it's a quarter turn to the right. And that'll just pop off. Then we need to get a screw to unscrew it from the actual chassis of the boiler. That screw you need to keep because you don't get a spare one in the pack. With all that disconnected, this is how you manage to wiggle it out. So I'm doing this one-handed, holding the phone and pulling that out, and I can still get it out with one hand. Albeit it's extremely tricky, but it does come. There you go, just like that it'll pop off. Right, so replace the rubbers on those. 
gonna replace the domestic hot water sensor because that's the existing and that's what it should look like. Saves the customer a call out in the future. Then we're gonna put it back in in reverse order. I'll start with the securing screw on the plate. Make sure the plate washers don't fall out, otherwise you'll get wet when you turn it back on. Put the bypass securing screw in as well. Make sure it's done up nice and tight. Then secure the clip at the top. It's literally just quarter turn round again. And then I put the flow pipe in first. It can be quite tricky, but again, plenty of lube and it should be fine. Don't forget your fibre washer. Make sure you've cleaned all of the other fibre washer off completely, otherwise it won't seal. Then a long handled screwdriver to tighten it to the chassis of the boiler. I don't tighten that up to begin with because that flow pipe can be a bit tricky to get in. So it's nice to have a bit of movement on it. But now it's all in place, I'm gonna tighten it up. Now I'm gonna put the hot pipe in, pop it in, push the clip down, and then put the fiber washer on and then twist it into place. can be a bit tricky to line it up, but make sure you don't cross thread it. When you're happy with it, give it a pinch up. Now we're gonna put the expansion vessel hose back in. Again, plenty of lube, clean it up, replace the rubber if you need to. All right, one of the last things is put the domestic hot water sensor in, put the clip down, plug it in. When you're happy everything's done and tight, open the flow and return and then start filling the boiler. Once the pressure's right, turn the power to the boiler back on and test it. Green light means go. That's another one done. Happy days.